All right, here we are back with another episode of Ask an Inspector Podcast. I'm your host, Josh, and for this episode, we have Special Projects' very own Kristen here to discuss the Registered Environmental Health Specialist Program, R-E-H-S. Thank you, Kristen, for being here and participating in this interview. Thank you for having me. So take us through a typical day of an environmental health specialist. Like, what do they do on a typical day? Well, working as an EHS in Riverside County entails conducting inspections and investigations involved with the enforcement of environmental health laws and regulations, and then preparing inspection reports, citations, notices of violation, and other investigative reports. Now, if I am, I'm a college student, and I'm a science major, I start to get interested in like, oh, what is this registered environmental specialist? Like, how do I, as a science major, become a registered environmental specialist? To work for a Riverside County Department of Environmental Health, you have to be an REHS, or a registered environmental health specialist. So you have to get registered with the California Department of Public Health, or CDPH. So it's, it's not just us. So you're not getting the registration through our department. No, yeah, you have to go through the state to do that. Okay. So there's a few requirements that the state requires for you to become registered. Number one, you have to meet the educational requirements. So you have to have a minimum of a bachelor's degree from a four-year college, and you have to have taken at least 30 semester units of basic science coursework. So qualified college graduates have to apply to CDPH and have their transcripts evaluated. Once you've had your transcripts evaluated, CDPH will issue a letter of eligibility, which will allow you to apply for an open position as an EHS. 30 semester units. Can it be just any science courses I'm, or is there uh, particular ones that you have to make sure you have? Yes, there, there are specific ones that you have to make sure you have. And then they, they kind of work with you. If you don't have those, they can look at your other, you know, the other courses that you've taken. But again, it's all CDPH that, that regulates that. So. Okay. You'd have to get a transcript evaluation and submit that to, to the state and then work with them about getting your letter saying they're eligible to work as an EHS. Okay. So it's not like, hey, there's a job opening. Let me just put my application in. You have to be aware that if you want to do this as a career, you have to basically have all your ducks lined up in a row to be ready to actually apply for a job as a registered environmental specialist. Exactly. And actually, um, even if you do apply to, you know, for a job with Riverside County as an EHS, if you don't have that letter from CDPH saying that you're eligible to work as a trainee as yeah. an EHS, you won't be admitted to the interview. Ooh, so okay. yeah, you got to have that stuff all lined up and ready for oh. when they call you and say, hey, we want to schedule an interview. For oh, you. that would stink. I'd be like all excited. And then, uh, where's your letter? Uh, what? Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? What letter? I'm sorry, sir. You. Uh, yeah, you can't come. <laughs> There's the door. No. Actually, it's a funny story because when I when I applied for this job, uh, I didn't have my letter yet. I had I'd submitted my transcript evaluation, and they called me to schedule the interview, and they asked if I had my letter, and I said, you know, I don't have it yet, but I applied huh. about a month ago, and it's supposed to take about a month to get the complete the transcript evaluation. Yeah. And they said, oh well, you should be getting it any day now, so we'll go ahead and schedule your interview. And it was it was literally like the day before the interview, it had not come in the mail yet. Oh, so stressful. I was on the phone. I was trying to call anybody in CDPH, trying to get them to, to fax yeah. me that letter. Yeah. And I finally I finally got it like just in time for the interview. Yeah. But I swear I have it. Please. Yeah, hire I was me. like, no. please, please let me have the interview. <laughs> nice. I have them on the phone right here. <laughs> please. <laughs> just tell them, tell them, tell this panel. Nice. So say CDPH issues the letter. What about training requirements or experience? Does that matter? Can you go right from college, getting that letter to getting hired? Or do you have to have work experience first? Uh, You don't necessarily have to have work experience, but depending on the the courses that you've taken in college, that will determine how much training and experience you need to have. So depending on what your degree is in, you might not even need any training and experience. You might have already gotten all that through, you know, your college coursework. Uh, If you haven't gotten, you know, the training experience through your college coursework, then that letter that you get from CDPH would indicate how much training you need to get before they'll allow you to take the REHS exam. Okay. So if you get hired with us as a trainee, and then now you have this exam that you have to pass, how long do you have before you actually need to pass the REHS exam? You have three years from your date of hire. So you can work as an EHS trainee for three years. So depending on what your letter says from CDPH, you might need to take, you know, 
a few months of cross training and get the, the experience and do all those things. You basically just have to follow what it says in the letter that you get from CDPH. Mm-hmm. And then usually uh, most people will choose to take the exam when they when they become eligible, once they're done with their cross training and once they've gotten all the uh, experience time that they need. And again, these are all rules that the state sets, but you are only allowed to work for three years as a trainee. That's kind of nice. So everyone's on the same page with the state. So all these EHSs across the state basically have to abide by the same educational standards. Yes. I'm assuming that our EHS exam has to be hard. What's the best way to prepare for it or how do you prepare for it? So the best way to prepare for it is to uh, make sure that you get plenty of cross-training and that that you're cross-trained in a lot of different fields. And that's one of the best parts about working for Riverside County is that we have over 30 different programs. So you can cross-train in foods, pools, hazmat, LEA, land use, vector control. You can get all this cross-training because it's all going to be questions on the exam. Uh, the exam is extremely you know broad and wide when it's talking about environmental health issues. So when you get hired as an EHS, you're main job might be, you know, hazmat or foods and pools. But when it comes to taking the exam, you're tested on everything when it comes to to environmental health. Um, Is it online? Do you have to go somewhere? What's it like, like the test experience itself? The test is still in person. So it's given three times a year, usually in March, July, and November. And it's given at a location in Northern California and also in Southern California. And uh, you basically, you just, you go to the the testing site, you sit there, you take the test, and then you find out in about a month whether you passed or not. That's why we have such a robust training program here for the new hires, right? We actually help prepare them to One, be ready to inspect out in the field, but then also to help them prepare to take this exam, right? Or that's how it's designed? Yes, exactly. And then we also have a ton of material that we have online to help people study for the exam. So if you get hired with uh, Riverside County, you would have access to all of the study material that we have. Uh, And then also we provide the cross training in the different programs so that you can be, you know, ready to take the exam because it's not just about book learning. It's also about your experience out in the world and, you know, doing inspection. And, and doing things that you would do as an EHS. Oh, yeah. I, I do remember um, when I was first started as an inspector um, years ago, that, that field experience was so helpful in understanding the codes and regulations I was reading. And in fact, I would say definitely that that hands-on experience at least was very helpful in understanding the program that I was responsible to inspect for. Yeah, because I mean, let's be honest, reading the laws and regulations, it's like reading stereo instructions. It'll, yeah. It will put you to sleep. When you can have that real world experience, you know, seeing it with your own eyes and then being able to apply the laws and the code sections that, that are actually being enforced, it makes it so much easier. So let's go through the steps just so that we're very clear exactly the steps that it takes start to finish for you to get a job with our department. So number one, submit your transcript evaluation to CDPH and apply to become an uh, EHS trainee. And then once they've looked over your transcripts and made sure that you've taken all the right courses that you need to take, they'll issue you that letter. And then you would want to apply with our department to become an REHS trainee and you'll go through the interview process. And then once... And sometimes through that interview process, it can take a while because I guess the, the cool thing is that usually when we have openings, there's a lot of people that want to get hired by our department. So sometimes it can be like one, two, or three rounds, right? It's not just a one-round interview where it's like, oh, I got the job. Yes, exactly. So the the way that we do it right now is we have a, it's a three-round interview process. So you have your first round, and if you pass the first round, you get moved on to the second round. And if you pass the second round, then you get moved on to the third round, so. So to kind of wind down, our last question, what are some of the most important skills required to be a good inspector? Like, what do you look for? Or what are you hoping that as the inspector is going through the training that they're going to pick up? Oh, uh, so there's there's actually a lot that, that goes into being a good inspector. Um, but a big part of our job involves working with the public. So you really need to be able to be a people person and have good interpersonal skills. So diplomacy, conflict resolution, problem solving, empathy. These are all skills an EHS uses daily, and our department emphasizes enforcement through education. So while we're enforcement officers, we are also teachers. So we work with businesses to help them understand and comply with the various laws and ordinances. And being able to communicate and work with them to solve problems is huge. Uh, And then also a big part of what we do is being able to read, understand, and interpret and apply laws and regulations. 
So, you know, we enforce the laws and we ensure compliance with California Health and Safety Code, California Code of Regulations, and Riverside County Ordinances. So if you can't read and interpret these laws and code sections, you won't be able to enforce them. Uh, and then, you know, a huge part of what we do also is, you know, writing reports. Now, I'm sure you've heard the saying, the work isn't finished until the paperwork is done. Yeah. And that's, that's 100% applies to what we do. We do the inspections and then you have to sit down and actually do the documentation and the reports and get it all in the file. So very independent work. Like yeah. really, like you as an inspector have a district and it really is up to you whether or not you're going to um, enforce and regulate the facilities. Yeah. So you're, you're basically, you're, you're given your district and you're given your list of all the facilities that you need to inspect. And it's up to you to plan your day. You know, your supervisor will let you know how many inspections you need to do today to, to make sure that you're keeping up with your district. But pretty much you work independently as an EHS. Uh, you really have to be a self-starter. And you also have to be able to be flexible because, you know, there's so many times that I planned out my entire day and I know where I'm going to go throughout the day. And then suddenly I get told that, you know, I need to respond to a foodborne illness complaint or a fire investigation. And I, I have to draw everything and and go to do that so you have to be able to be flexible as well all right that is all the time we have thank you so much Kristen, for being here and taking our questions well thank you for giving me this opportunity and remember if you're in school and interested in becoming an ehs but would like more information please visit our website at www.rivcoeh.org until next time this is josh from ask an inspector podcast signing off